it as a business because I know they get paid. Well, they I don't vary. know how much there they are... get paid, but well, presumably can... some might find it attractive. Well, there is some big, big money to be made in this. You, up, up to half a million pounds a year can be paid for a really disturbed child in foster care. Not what? foster care, but in, in a residential setting. A family? Well, no, it's not normally a family. A fam... The problem is this, is that there used to be a lot of foster carers working for local authorities. From their homes? Right? From their homes. Yes. What's happened more so since is that they've got agencies set up and the agency for a child may be paid about 40 grand a year, something like that. Mm -hmm. And these sums of money add up to quite big sums of money. So if, if an agency for three kids could be getting £100,000 a year. So it's like granny farming, isn't it? So these people set up these difficult children farms. Well, to a certain extent, although obviously there, there is... A, some of the kids are very difficult to handle. Let's not beat around the bush. It's not as if the kids are easy to handle. Perhaps they do beat them around the bush. Well, <laughs> then you have that. That's, you see, the problem is you can go on to the other issue of how, how kids get abused in foster care, but the system silences them, which is very bad as well. Uh, but that, that's a completely different thing. And I suppose they get non-believe. They, they get unbelieved. Well, they get unbelieved. What you, well, they often find that kids won't speak out about being abused in foster care till they're adults. And by then, of course, it's too late. Yeah. But most fosterers are very good. It's not, I'm not saying, you know, the evidence from America is that foster care is less safe than being in care with families that are natural families. But that doesn't really mean a lot, necessarily, because in theory, a child should only be in foster care if it's necessary, not for just stupid reasons. Well, what would be stupid reasons? Well, in my view, if you've got a situation where mum's been beaten up by dad and they've split up, and mum's got the kids. You shouldn't take the kids off mum. Well, why do they then? Well, you have to ask them. <laughs> it's called... Well, you're an MP. You well, make no, the laws. Well, uh, yeah, sort but the, of. the point is the courts don't necessarily follow the laws because they're in secret. They, they don't necessarily follow the laws properly and all sorts of procedural things go wrong. And, and have... Is there an oversight of the court well, system? Well, in theory, what, let's, let's talk a little... If you let me try and... Let's go through how things happen. Right? OK. Let's go through That's how things happen. a good place to be. And okay. the problems with the system. Uh, ignore for the moment that the, the local authority is under pressure to do the wrong thing. Right? Ofsted puts pressure on local authorities to do the wrong thing. Ignore for a moment that there's a thing called the int integrated children's system, which makes them make the wrong decisions because they're pressurised into making an early decision about a case rather than collecting all the information. And the, also the integrated children's system keeps the social workers in the office rather than going out visiting people because they have to feed the computer. And feeding the machine is the top priority because you've got to keep all your boxes ticked, all right? And all the numbers have to be right. Isn't one of those boxes visit the child at home? No. <laughs> the problem is the boxes are do an assessment within 35 days, initial assessments within seven days. The problem with that is if, if you haven't got all the information, you shouldn't be making a judgment. So there is a problem, which is that the, um, the, the system basically... Um, forces social workers into making the wrong decision. So it's wrong to demonise the social workers. The people who are at fault here are actually the government for setting up the system in the first instance. But let's put that on side. We get a situation. And let's, let's take a case I've got which I can name the people, which is where I've got a great-grandfather, a grandmother and a father. Uh, the great-grandfather's name is Phil Thompson. He's on my weblog. You can see a picture of him. Clayton v. Clayton allows me to identify him. Do you want to give your uh, web address for this? Johnhemming.blogspot.com. Okay, johnhemming.blogspot.com. Hey, you take Phil Thompson's case. He's a great-grandfather. Mm -hmm. He wonders why his three great-grandchildren have been taken off the family. So he writes to the court, and the court says, we've lost the file. All right? I'm sure he'll come on air for you. So we write to Kafkas. Kafkas is... Now, Kafkas is the court and... F well, it's the, it's the advisers. They sort of operate for the family courts to give advice to the judge. They, act, they provide what's called a guardian ad litem service, whereby, in theory, they're representing the interests of the child. Right. So they're the sort of devil's advocate, if you well, like. Well, in theory, they, they, they look independently at the situation. Normally, they're mates of the social worker, so they just go along with the social worker. But... In theory, they're supposed to give an independent view. Uh, in Birmingham and the black country, the, 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 uh, the Thompson family live in Birmingham, um, CAFCAS are officially inadequate. Officially? Officially. As in Ofsted recently came out with their inspection result and said, CAFCAS, you're inadequate. Right. So, uh, OK, so then the children are not represented by anybody. Well, they their, are represented. Their but, side. But you, you have the, 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 there's another issue about whether they actually listen to what the children say when the children have a chance to say anything.
All right. But come back to this case. You've got Phil Thompson. Okay. Um, great grandfather. He, he, great grandfather. He writes to the court. They've lost the file, so they don't know why the children were adopted. <clears throat> um, he writes to Kafkas. They've lost the file. All right. Uh, it's disgusting, it, isn't it? It's really? just, I've got the email. I've got all the stuff. Um, and then we try to get something out of the council, and they won't say anything. And we try to get something out of his own, his grandson's solicitors, who won't give us a copy of the file. Right now. Why? Because the solicitor acts for... No, the solicitor acts for the parents, in theory. I'll just to give you an aside, a social worker came to see me yes. in Birmingham at my advice bureau and told me how he used to work with the parents' solicitors to work out how to make sure that the parents lost their case. Yeah? So okay. the solicitor was taking money so, under false pretenses? Well, you could sort argue. of. It's legal aid that pays for it. All right, it's, they don't take the money directly off the parents. So the, the solicitor pretends to be acting for, for the, the parents, parents. whilst actually acting to undermine their case. Now, and not you have all evidence solicitors of this, do John? Um, I, I've got, well, you could, why won't they give the parents their files? It's always very dubious, isn't it? Well, the, no, well you said they wouldn't give the great-grandfather no, the file, the, yes, but and he's, he's not the client, is the he? The client is his grandson, and the letter's written by his grandson and signed by his grandson, who lives with his So he wouldn't give his client... He wouldn't give his client a copy of his client's own file. Could he not sue the solicitor? Well, then you've got to get another firm of solicitors to do it. What we're trying to do is go through the solicitor's regulatory authority who do all the regulation work on that. Surely they should be struck off, shouldn't well, they? Of course they should be struck off. But it's, it's not that easy. You know, all these things take a lot of chasing through the system. And is this happening frequently? Um, ones where they completely lose the files, there aren't so many of. But there are other cases which are, you know, similar in their dubious nature. So. The only people who've got the files anymore are the solicitors. Well, we're not even sure they've got the files, because you sometimes find files get mysteriously shredded. Why? Well, because things have gone on that they don't want to have revealed? Yeah, they don't want things to have revealed. Yeah, it happens. What's happening to these children? Are they going off and being abused or something? Well, we don't know. This is the point. Because, I mean, I've had Brian Gerrish on here making suggestions.